Hi there. I think it's important to put neural networks in context that they can sometimes be weak or vulnerable in bad positions as you'd expect from the opening and also in tactical positions as well. Generally the traditional kind of brute force style engines have in tactical positions often the upper hand. So this is Stockfish 8 against Alpha Zero in the 2018 match and the opening position given by TSEC top chess engine competition is a French defense and we go into the classical variation Bishop G5 and this is actually one of my favorite gambits actually the Alekhine Chatard Gambit which I've used myself in over the board chess with success. It's a really fun gambit indeed. We have Bishop takes G5 H takes so we get a semi open H file pressure we get a tempo gain on the Queen. Now the book move given is Queen E7 in this game. Maybe it seems as though Queen H4 might actually be more accurate to provoke G3. The Queen could then go back and White still getting a small edge you know this position White has significant compensation. Black's King is displaced and this is just an example where White can get significant compensation in any case for the sacrifice pawn. It's not ideal for black. There's other factors in the possession here, not just the uh, pawn that blacks one. So okay, queen e7 though was was played. We have queen g4. So the thing is, without a pawn on g3, this third rank is actually potentially nifty for a rook later. We have g6, knight g5, h6. This really isn't threatening anything because of that pin. If h5 had been played, queen f4. Let's examine this position for a moment. G4 is a strong move. If Bishop D7, Bishop G2, and White is kind of threatening to sack the bishop actually. If Knight C6, we can play Bishop takes D5. These situations are perilous for Black. So you might be wondering, yeah, there's this there's too much uh, play if Black ever takes on d5 here. So this position for example e6 and we're threatening mate on c7. So it's kind of nasty situations. So say knight h7, knight takes, rook takes, the bishop just drops back with a big advantage. So yes, so bishop takes d5 would be actually really quite dangerous here. So yeah, bishop g2 is actually kind of useful for that big threat. Anyway, h6 was played and white castles queenside knight c6. So if queen takes g5 check we're just taking and taking on h8. Big advantage here for white. So knight c6. So now we have a rook left rook d3 and the immediate concern for black is the pressure on f7. We have h5 and now Guess what Stockfish plays? This is a really wonderful move tactically. Rook f3. <laughs> so a6 is played here. If h takes, the point is rook takes h8 check. And we just take on f7 with advantage. We have got a big advantage here with white. So a6 is tried. Queen g3 just leaving the knight to be taken. Essentially, knight d8 is played. If a takes here, Rook takes f7 is really strong. Now the reason this is really strong is that here, well black is threatening queen e1 mate. We play c3, only move for an advantage and a good move. And then queen f4 and black is actually helpless against the incoming attack here. Queen f6 with tempo and say check, check and rook g8. We take out c7. And we've got now a raging attack here after rook takes d7 check, knight takes e6 check, queen takes g8 check. Yeah, we're just winning more and more material here. We're just recoup recouping lots of material and even taking out the queen after. We're just going to end up either taking out the queen or ideally just checkmating like this example. Even better. <laughs> so knight d8 is played. We have knight c3. Knight d7, Bishop d3, Knight f8. 
just to show the frets, if A5 here, we actually have a frat here, knight takes f7 with an almighty pin being created, which black really can't escape from that easily. The pin pressure intensifies, and say so queen g5 check. This is fairly hopeless after rook takes d7 check for black. Uh, it's hopeless for black here, this position. So we've uh, ended up in the resulting position here being two pawns up with a very nice position. So, okay, so knight f8 is tried. This doesn't look aesthetically pleasing, to say the least. We have rook h4, rook g8, and now a real stunner of a move showing Stockfish's tactical prowess. White wants to wrap the knights around the f6 square, but there is one knight which could come to help black, so it's ideal if both knights could be involved, ideally like this, but how to arrange this kind of position where knight f6 is a really formidable threat. So this next move is absolutely wonderful. So for 100 points, can you guess? Bishop c4. So it looks as though, you know, bishop takes d5 is an immediate threat, among other things, if it's ignored. If knight c e4 black would take and be able to defend f6 with that other knight and we could try rook takes h5 but black actually ends up being okay so for example this situation black's going to be okay if c6 this weakens the d6 square and actually we can play knight g4 let's examine this position this is fascinating so first of all, if d takes e4, knight takes e4, and black's best might actually be king d7 here, this resulting position, we're taking out the rook. But if knight d7, we can actually play rook takes h5 first, and then get that knight to d6, and actually f7 is the big target. Kick the queen away, and then rook h7, and we're crashing through on f7 chat mating so yeah getting a knight to d6 was, is wonderful as well if we look at this again if d takes e4 here knight takes e4 yeah sorry if pardon me if d takes c4 <laughs> then knight f6 and we're winning the queen so that's as simple as that so yes, that, that's crushing. C6 doesn't really help. It weakens another square that can tactically be used, basically. And if D takes C4 immediately, so we're saying um, on Bishop C4, D takes C4 immediately, Knight C4. Let's see how the Knights, they wrap around the F6 square. So this is quite intriguing. So Knight H to F6 check, Queen G5. And actually, believe it or not here, the key threat is g4. Black's really not in a position to the thing and against g4. If knight takes, knight takes this position, c3, and then g4. And then what happens here is, yeah, black's crumbling because even if there's these nuisance checks, we get this position where this is too strong, this idea of h takes g6. And if g takes, rook takes, and we get this nice mating pattern, checkmate there. If we go back with queen b4, bishop b3, rook g7, a3, queen a5, queen f4 actually has a threat of queen f6. If knight h7, g4, and here, yeah, this is so powerful, g takes h5, knight takes h7, queen g5. And here, yeah, queen g7, rook takes h5, and white's pressure is building up quite ruthlessly. So rook h8 is on the cards potentially. And yeah, this is just overwhelming. There's, there's overwhelming pressure on, on the black position here. So, you know, black's basically crumbling here. So this position, black's going to be losing material. So, okay, fascinating stuff. Really fascinating. So Queen D7 in the game was tried actually. And now we have 
knight c e4 d takes so that threat of knight f6 is pretty compelling to do something about that contact the bishop with knight f6 check so d takes e4 yeah knight h7 doesn't help knight takes and then we're still playing knight f6 check and then taking out the queen so d takes e4 knight takes e4 so here knight h7 was played if queen takes d4 we can rule that out with knight f6 check and look we're hitting the queen we can at first actually take out g8 and then take the queen so knight h7 was tried but here yeah guess what white plays for 10 points so crushing rook takes h5 yeah end of game if g takes h5 we're taking out g8 knight f6 and here bishop b3 we're trying to nudge the queen away from e8 for checkmate and if knight takes f6 e takes this possession queen f8 check queen c5 is checkmate so really brutal win here indeed so yes if uh after bishop b3 as well if queen a4 bishop b3 queen take, we, we've just mentioned that queen e8 is checkmate so a really brutal win here in 22 moves so alpha zero can't defend any any position in opening theory and credit to stockfish for being absolutely brilliant and incisive with stock you know the the justification of the alakine chateau gambit here was absolutely you know vivid by stockfish for for showing the real power of this gambit of just one pawn it's a ferocious gambit a lot of fun for dynamic attacking players indeed it shows how solid actually the gambit is and there's the, the compensation is more than enough it seems for the pawn here so blacks having to create weaknesses and more and more pressure is being built up on the black position in a nutshell so a fascinating game alpha zero does need a decent start position L like normal human beings it needs a decent start position it can't recover from absolutely everything especially when playing against an absolute tactical genius like stockfish so stockfish is really amazing tactically and yeah it's good to put things in context things have strengths and weaknesses to be aware of and for normal you know game analysis stockfish is still you know absolute king nowadays for normal game analysis and it embraced nnue anyway neural networks as part of its system so it's always been improving but uh yeah even in this 2018 match alpha zero was particularly destroyed in this game and some others where the opening position in particular was was sometimes bad but yeah there's some certain types of positions which stockfish excels and it's good to be aware of, you know fully aware of that that there's strengths and limitations of both approaches to chess so chess is a very rich game with different approaches being effective in different circumstances and different you know kind of opening positions depending on how tactical or strategical an opening is one approach might actually be more effective than the other okay i hope you enjoyed this one thanks so much all comments questions likes and subscribes really appreciated thanks so much